Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Chenin Nanta Senamad, and I'm an associate professor of bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this type of content, please consider subscribing. And so a week ago, I received a message from Moez Ali, who was the founder and principal author of PyCaret. And he released the PyCaret, which is a new open source, low code machine learning library in Python. And so it allows you to train and deploy machine learning model in low code environment. And he created an excellent video tutorial on the features of the program. And they provided the documentation and also a few tutorials so that you could follow along and use the PyCaret in your own project. And so in this video, I'm going to show you what this PyCaret package is about and how it can be used for your data science project. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that you want to do is head over to the PyCaret website by going to pycaret.org. Okay, and then you will arrive at this website. And so let's have a look at what this library is all about. Let's head over to Google Colab and then create a new notebook. Okay, and let's call it PyCaret. And click on install. Okay, and installation is straightforward. pip install PyCaret. Let's type that in. pip install PyCaret. Okay, and as it is installing, let's take a look at what it has to offer here. Let's click on getting started, right? And then the first part here is the PyCaret guide. And so in the guide here, we can see that it provides information on installing PyCaret, the various modules of PyCaret, that it can do classification, regression, clustering, anomaly detection, natural language processing, association rule mining. And there are functions associated with the packages here, and it will provide more information. And the package allows to do data pre-processing, and there are tutorials here on the same topic as the modules. And if anyone interested to contribute here can also contribute their code and so let's click on the first module classification so why don't we just follow along here let's copy the code and so let's have a look at the get data get data let's see what data is there here is there iris data set with a single quotation. Okay, so there's the iris data set. So why don't we change this to iris data set so it should run quicker. Let's change this to iris. We'll change this target equals to species and this will be the iris and then this will be iris. Okay, so get data it will get the iris data set into the iris variable and then in the setup we're going to define the iris as the data here and the target will be trying to predict the species okay and let's initialize this so the data set is smaller so hopefully it should run quicker so currently it's preparing the data for modeling Okay, so the thing is you could follow along by starting from the top and moving your way down, right? So in initialize in the function here, the first thing is getting the data and then setting up the environment, which is what we're doing right now. And then the next step is to do model training. And the model training has three functions. Compare the models. It means that PyCaret will have a list of more than 10 learning algorithms and it will roughly create a preliminary model on 11 models and give you a summary performance table. And and from the initial 10 or 12 learning algorithms, let's say that you're interested in one of them or two of them, then you could use the create model command in order to create the actual model. Okay, and then once you get the model, you can also continue with tuning the parameters of the model. Okay, and aside from model training, you could do model ensembling. And model ensembling would mean to combine several classifier into a meta classifier. Meta, M-E-T-A, meaning that we fuse together or blend together or stack together multiple classifier and make it into a ultimate or make it into a meta or combined version of the classifier. So it's kind of like 10 in one classifier. And it's 
using some form of voting scheme in order to average the, the prediction score. And so this will be the post model analysis. So the thing is you have already built the model and then you're gonna analyze the results from the model. And then after that, you wanna deploy the model, right? Put the model into production. Okay, and so let's see if it's finished yet. Oh, okay, I think it's waiting for us to type enter. All right, so actually it might have completed faster than expected. Let's run it again. Oh, okay, so it's telling us a warning here. And if we type enter, so enter here. So notice to click on this thing and click enter. And it's finished. Okay, so setup is rather quick. So I forgot to notice this. And so when you're running it, make sure that there is a text box at the bottom. You just hit enter on it. Okay, and now it's finished and let's move on to the next step. And so we have finished the initialize already, right? We, we got the data. We have already set up the environment and now let's compare the models. And so we have already run that already. And so this is the setup. We have already done that. Okay, so it's very simple. Just compare models. That's it. Compare underscore models. Okay, let's run that. Compare underscore models. That's it. Okay, wow, very intuitive, very simple. And I like that it's giving you on the fly progress and what algorithms it's currently running. And the summary data table will be updated in real time. So this is very neat and it provides several classification performance here. Accuracy, area under the curve, recall, precision, F1, kappa. Okay, so the value of AUC seems off well accuracy is okay and it highlights the model which has the highest value so quadratic discriminant analysis provided the highest accuracy okay so very impressive it's rather quick on this small data set so let's run the next step so let's say that we want to create the model let's see what do we do okay and you see that there are more than 10 learning algorithms here okay so qda right qda QDA right here provided the best performance. Let's use that. Okay, so it's just simply here. Let me copy that. Creating the model. So it's QDA and I'm going to say create underscore model, right? And then QDA. And so it provides me with cross validation, the mean score from cross validation of 10. So it is doing a 10 fold CV and it's the accuracy and other classification performance from each run for a total of 10 runs. And then the mean is the mean cross validated score and along with the SD. Okay, so I have already got the model created for this QDA. And let's see what's the next step. Tune model. Okay, let's see in the tune model. So the example here is using the random forest. So let's use random forest also. Oh, okay. This is an example of regression. Uh, I have to use this. Okay. So this is for regression. It should be. Or maybe I just say I want to optimize according to the accuracy. And let's see what is inside the tune RF. So it optimized the number of estimators to be 10, right? Minimum sample split to be 9. Minimum sample sleep to be 1. Okay, so accuracy is 96.09. This is random forest. How about here? 93, right? So the first trial was 93. Let's say that we built this into a random forest. Let's see. 0 0.9318 is right here, 9318. And so after tuning, we get 9609, okay? Let's go to the next step. So we have already completed the model training here and let's go to, so model ensembling we can skip because we're not using that here. And let's go to the model analysis. Plot the model. Okay, let's see that we want to plot the AUC. AUC, this is the abbreviated string. And we're going to just type in plot model. LR. Plot model. Plot 
model RF. Okay, so it will plot the ROC curve for the RF here. Okay, because we have three classes, it will show us the three lines for each of the three classes here. The Irisitosa, Versicolor, Virginica. Okay, so it's plot model RF. But what if I want confusion matrix? Confusion matrix. All right, here we go. So I got the confusion matrix here. All right, so very intuitive. What about learning curve? All right, very neat. So as the number of training samples increases, we see the scores, right? They're kind of going down, okay? All right, looks very nice. The plot looks very nice and very simple. You just put in the parameter that you want to be shown and the plot will be done automatically. All right, so let's see what else. Interpret model. Calibrate model. Model deployment. Predict model. Finalize model. Deploy model. Okay, and see what's here. Predict model. Predict on holdouts. Predictions on on scene data. Okay. So this is for when we are going to deploy the model and we're testing the model before doing that. And then the deploy model, it needs access to the Amazon Web Service IDs and all that. So you could give this a try. And there's a tutorial for beginners and intermediate as well. Right. And so essentially we have already created a simple model using classification. And if you would like to click on this, it will spawn up a Google Colab version for you as well. Okay, and it comes with a intuitive explanation for each step of the way, right? So you can also run this. So it's essentially what we have been doing the past couple of minutes, right? So comparing the models, creating the model, and it will do cross validation. Right here, it creates multiple model. It will tune the parameters so that you get the best performance for that particular algorithm. Okay, so I'll probably have to take a closer look on how I can derive the tuned parameter results table, meaning that if it tunes the random forest, it probably will tune the M try and the N tree numbers. And I want to show the M try N tree versus the accuracy for example, okay, so it would be nice to have access to such data. So I'll take a closer look if that is available in the Tune RF. And I really like the fact that the RLC plot could be easily created using just one line here. Precision recall curve as well. So it's very beautified for you already. So you just put in the argument as the input and you get a beautiful plot. As you might know, I mean, creating a Nice looking plot will take you hours or even days, okay? And you could do this in a couple of seconds. So very useful. Confusion matrix, feature importance, evaluate the model. Predict on test holdout samples, finalize the model for deployment. Okay, so we have seen quite good promise for the Pyre Carrot package, and it contains many of the essential parts of a typical data science project. So if you find value in this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below which feature you find interesting and promising or which feature that you think should be included in PyCarrot in the future release. All right. So as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And so I hope that you can make use of PyCarrot in your own data science project. And please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. And I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.